Hello Cloud Gurus, I'm Nigel Poulton and welcome to another episode of Kubernetes This Month. As always, we'll go through the major news and announcements in our quick catch up section. We'll explore two or three of those in more detail in the deeper dive section, and then we'll wrap up with another Guru of the Month. So make sure you're comfortable and get ready to enjoy. There has been a ton going on in the cloud native and Kubernetes world this month. And these are what I think are the highlights. Now, I'm going to start right at the center with Kubernetes itself and the announcement of Kubernetes 1.16. Now, we're going to dive deeper into this in our deeper dive section. But yeah, 1.16 is here. So a huge congratulations to everyone on the release team and everyone supporting them. Great job. Into the managed Kubernetes space. We've got general availability of container native load balancing on GKE. That's Google's hosted Kubernetes engine. And I'm going to talk about that as well in the deeper dive section. But we've also got the release of AKS Periscope. This is a tool that helps you with your initial diagnostics and troubleshooting when things go wrong in AKS clusters. The idea being to save you the hassle of working out things like which logs do you need from which nodes and which pods and all of that kind of jazz. Now, away from hosted Kubernetes, but sticking with Microsoft, since we've just had .NET Conf, it's worth mentioning that .NET Core 3.0 has landed. Into the service mesh space, Istio 1.3 was released, so congratulations there. Now, what I really like about this is the focus on ease of adoption by new users, as well as making it simpler to debug. Helm 3 also hit a milestone this month. It got a beta 1 release. And as you'd expect, going into beta is a sign that the funky new features are all in the product now and we're pretty much on the home straight with just bug fixes and some stability stuff standing between Helm 3 and a big GA release. Speaking of GA releases, Cloud Native Application Bundles, or CNABs for short, just released their 1.0 spec. Great job there and Traffic 2.0 landed. And for the guys at Traffic, this is a major release. And you know what? It is for the community as well. So 2.0 for Traffic with loads of new important features. On a more somber note, okay, Containership has announced that it's ceasing operations. In the blog post announcing the end of business, they cite fast moving markets and lots of players hustling hard as the reasons that they've come up short. So a sad day there, but hopefully we'll see those guys back in the game with new adventures as soon as possible. And that wraps up our monthly catch up. In this month's deeper dive section, we'll pick up on three things. Obviously, Kubernetes 1.16. We'll also look though at container native load balancing on GKE and we'll take a look at Helm 3. Kubernetes 1.16, I mean, where do we start? Well, custom resources or CRDs, these are the de facto way to extend Kubernetes. And you know what, for me, it feels like we only just got them like a few months ago. But you know what, they've actually been around in alpha since 1.7, which was way back in spring of 2017. Anyway, look, now they are GA and they're available under the API extensions.kubernetes.io slash v1 API subgroup. And you know what, believe me, there is so much potential and so much going on there that I wouldn't be surprised if we see a V2 Alpha 1 sooner rather than later. As well though, we get a bunch of cool new stuff with volumes, including support for volume resizing operations on CSI volumes. Now for me, I think this is a pretty big milestone and a real big help for those who are gonna be adopting CSI volumes. We also get a bunch of features around Windows support and we get an alpha implementation of endpoint slices, which I think is really cool and important and I've written about it. That's the highlights of Kubernetes 1.16. We said that GKE announced general availability of container native load balancing. So, what even is that and why is it important? Okay, well, it is pretty much what it says on the tin. It's load balancing that knows and understands containers. So in a typical load balancing scenario, you have traffic hit a service endpoint. That gets load balanced to a cluster node, 
the node does an IP tables lookup or whatever, and eventually your traffic is heading to a container where it gets serviced. Container native load balancing has intelligence built in that understands your containers. Net result, it can miss out the step where it goes to the node and it does the expensive IP tables lookup. What you get is better performance and better traffic visibility. Well, last but not least for our deeper dive section, Helm V3 Beta. So Helm is the de facto package manager for Kubernetes apps. The aim being to bring you a rich and useful method for deploying and managing your Kubernetes applications. And Helm V3 is a major product overhaul. So getting to beta means like we said, all the new funky stuff that's changing, that's all done. Focus now switches to getting it stable, ready for GA. But should you be using it? Well, I see two angles to that question, right? Should you be using Helm at all? And should you be using this beta version of Helm 3? Well, look, of course, the decision is always yours, but here's my quick take. I'd be really careful about using the beta version, right? If it was me, I think I'd be waiting for a later beta version or maybe even for GA. But to the wider question of whether you should be using Helm at all, well, as always, you should do a bunch of testing. And if it makes a difference to you, then yeah, go for it, right? But if it doesn't do anything for you, no stress. It is not mandatory. I just know that sometimes we have a tendency to get carried away and maybe implement things just for the sake of it. So don't do that. Remember, Helm itself is a complex application that you'd be bringing into your environment. And anytime you do something like that, you better be sure that you really need it. So test, test, test. And by the way, right, just because it is de facto does not mean it's mandatory. And that's it for our deeper dive this month. In last month's Guru of the Month question, I asked which technology Kubernetes uses to detect the health of a pod before adding it to the service pool. And the correct answer was B, a readiness probe. As always, there were some great answers. In fact, I was actually blown away by some of them this month. So massive respect if I'm talking about you there. But even if you don't get picked as the winner this month, thanks for being involved. And you know what? I'm sure you've learned a ton by making the effort to put the answer together. But there can only be one winner. And this month, it's Matthias De Carli. Matthias is a DevOps engineer from Buenos Aires in Argentina. So. Thanks to everyone who pitched in, but Mateus, you're our winner this month, so you'll be getting a goodie bag in the post. Now, this month's question is on the forum link below, and if you think you know the answer, get involved for your chance to win. And I'll see you next month, same cube time, same cube place.